thank you for joining us. Uh, this is thank absolutely you. pleasure that you joined us. Uh, I have been through your profile about Rapid Value Solutions, what you guys do and what you are doing from there. I also see that you are working from past 15 years as one of the main senior HR uh, in, the, in the industry and also you have joined uh, Rapid Value Solutions back in 2000s, uh, if I'm not wrong, I guess it was 17, October 2017. That's right. Till that's right. date, that's, that's great. And you have also worked with Novo Nordisk and that's a very big company. That's right. As a human resource director. No, I was actually a senior partner there and then I came to here as senior HR manager. Okay, 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 okay. That's great, sir. So if, could you, if you could just throw some light on your career, how did you uh, become what you are today? And how did you manage to you know, grow up the ladder? That would be helpful for our viewers. Because this interview is basically about career building. It's not to know what is the company's revenue, how what product you're launching. It's just, we just want to know like, how did you build your career in HR? Uh, what is the scope for HR? So people who are actually pursuing their MBAs or want to become HR, so people, I think people who want to become HR, they are mostly people oriented. They are not career oriented or mind wise. They just want to do good for people. I think that's why they choose that stream to become HR, if I'm not wrong. Absolutely. Absolutely. Fantastic. Uh, such a fantastic question. Uh, actually, I think uh, whatever I am today here, it's basically I've been shaped by my experiences. Let me just thank the set of experiences when I started from my, the whole set of tenure I had from the companies like DocuStream, US Technology, Infosys, and all a couple of them. I think more than anything, actually, I firmly believe, let it be an HR or any kind of specialization, very important piece, what I always feel is basically you need to have set of experiences and experience is your greatest teacher. Uh, and all throughout my journey, what had happened is I was fortunate enough to uh, have great leaders and mentors. And I, I, I would definitely like to tell everyone that I only went by three things in life. One is basically learning, opportunity and disruption. We just need to carry that. If you have that mentality, I think it's a streamline of opportunities for everyone every day. And that is something which excites me even now also, because I feel even at this point of time, when you have the so-called crisis, the best thing what students who are very serious about their life, nothing has come to an end. It's one thing wherein they definitely have to only think how they can disrupt. Never ever stop your learning. Every experience is let it be even for even if you have to take a printout or even have to do something small, there is nothing small or big. Everything they should be taking as a good experience. There is nothing called a bad experience. Because if you believe that experience can shape you up or if you believe experience is your greatest teacher, nothing else you need in life. And that will make you succeed because whatever you the see in your theories and books and all those things, it's well and good. But practically, if you have to say about experience, that is the best thing which can shape your perceptions, that can shape your thoughts mindsets and you make you evolve every day so i think that's the best thing every student should always carry even the people who are actually pursuing their mba right now also they should not feel that okay because of corona everything has come to an end no it's one thing you should still learn what else can i do if i am doing hr can i do finance this point of time can i go through some of the best websites across the world how can i evolve myself during this time they should not say i don't have internship i don't have lost my job no if yes, okay, I don't, again, I should try. There are companies which are still giving internships as per my knowledge. There are a lot mm -hmm. of companies which is giving you a lot of experiences also. So you have to go behind your mentor. You have to go behind your sponsor. Definitely the world is very good. It's all about your experiences. So I am, uh, to be very honest, I really need to thank my mentors, my leaders actually, who have shaped me whatever I am. It's nothing because I think they have been really strict with me and that's one reason I am here today. And still, I okay. work with a great organization where I am still mentored and coached by my CEO and CFO and CTO and all. So thanks for that. Okay. So when you say like people should not stop learning, what okay. you should uh, uh, throw some light because uh, what I understand from this particular thing that you have told is that you are you are still pursuing something, you are still looking to improve. So there is a, still a room for improvement for a person who's been, you know, who's a senior HR manager at a company, I would say, and been a HR senior HR partner as well, right? So what exactly uh, learnings are you doing? I think probably uh, I would also like to know there is hardly any time left in the day. So when do you learn? Sachin, you really nailed it. Fantastic question per se. 
actually uh, this is where people make mistakes when they at least reach some level in their organization because i i always firmly believe learning never stops till it reaches your deathbed till you are reaching your deathbed so probably one good thing i would definitely like to tell my people is every day in day out you should have only one trait which will make you succeed that is curiosity like babies if you look at babies at your home they always have curiosity to see what is that what is this so that's something which is important appetite for people to succeed in this era of volatile uncertainty complex and ambiguous vuca world so this is something which should always be there insane learning experience you should have sensors everywhere even when you are going in a train or even if you are going in a bus or even you are talking to the office staff you can still learn a lot of things and i feel the problem with most of the education is they try to box you saying that you are an hr guy you are a finance guy no and that is an important message to my friends who are is Uh, viewing this video don't ever box yourself because once you step step into a box kind of thinking you will not have appetite to learn what is happening mm-hmm. outside and i would definitely vouch that great leaders have something called masters of correlation they went outside their comfort zone to learn finance marketing operations not only left themselves to hr and a great hr leaders they always stretch themselves go out of their comfort zone and that is for me is learning learning is actually try to explore new things experiment curiosity all those things is what i would like to define under the bracket called learning okay that's great sir sir we would also like to understand more about your present company what what rapid value solution is all about what do you stand for and what is the uh, career growth perspective i'll keep ask add, adding on few more questions as we move on but we just sure. would like to start understand about your current organization what you're working Okay, so uh, Rapid Value has been there for more than ten years now. We celebrated our uh, annual year also. So, best thing is this was started by three great minds who actually were part of from IIT and IIM. So, they really wanted to do something in the mobile space in Kerala. That was their aspirations, and they started when they were in a comfort zone, and they really wanted to explore something new. And that's when this idea was born, and they started their venture here in Cochin. with three four people and then it's it went to 15 and then then that explode the so total count at this point of time is 340 and that's when we started really exploring new dimension so they said okay now we are in mobile space what next we need to do and that's when we the organization slowly started venturing out into something called camps cloud and digital mobile and social space so it's a uh, small organization with high determination to succeed so i work for an organization which has got high octane uh this one to succeed so so we have people from all dimensions of uh this one space where they work for our organizations and we have our offices in predominantly in us and then we have you are um, in offices in bangalore uk and even dubai so these are the small and then this is a growing organization and since since you asked me so let me just inform you we just won our great place to work also and that's great that that's excites great. us actually i think the best thing is people here work with lot of purpose and that is something very okay. important for a growing organization also okay gone are those now, days the, yeah sorry go, go ahead go ahead no yeah, no gone are those days when you ask generation z probably if you're talking about millennials and z they don't want to come and do their job you ask them what exactly. they 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 would like to say that i want to contribute and they would say wherever i see a purpose that's where i would come and do a job you cannot make them say come here 9 to 6 job no wherever you have your intellectual stimulation happening where there it's been questioned where you can search for your curiosity and where everything is there when you have exciting technologies that's where things really take a shape and it's a world of oh. technology so we uh, work on cutting edge technologies also so that's why we have high blended customers also who work with us yeah i also i also understand from my experience uh, being coming uh, coming off from the it field currently i'm also employed in one of them Right. it's one of the most stressful jobs stressful jobs especially yes. programmers delivery heads leaders and uh, you know sometimes you know people rub off rub it off very badly especially on the hr because they don't feel they get appreciated that much they don't feel get their reward are rewarded that much so how do you manage this what are the programs that you do in terms of employee engagement that's the word if employee engagement how do you do that and okay. how do you keep everyone happy because i can see from your face you are a smiling person So that means you are taking a lot of the things inside and then bring out that smile. That means there is a lot of stress out there. Yeah, uh, uh, fantastic question again, Sachin. Sachin, the main point is basically it starts with 
talent acquisition okay so basically when during see as i said ours is a growing organization so so for us every hire makes a lot of difference every hire which comes into our organization makes a lot of difference that's what has been taught to me by my leaders also to whom i report so what uh, and that's a philosophy across actually the if you have the right person the right bus you don't have to again go and train them so if that is something which we really put a lot of hard effort in getting the right person in the right bus so uh, in terms of the assessments to getting the right person we do extensive kind of assessments a lot of detailing into what has been sold to them we ask them this is a growing organization and this is not as structured let's assume if you are coming from xyz where you see this has been for 100 years and all those things i don't want to name any companies per se we have people from all across okay cts to accenture you name it we have so one thing which we normally i tell them is if you're coming from a structured or my me myself because when i was interviewed by my ceo he literally told me arvind i had worked for infosys you are coming from infosys are you okay to work in an unstructured kind of environment that is an honest conversation i believe if you have honest conversations you get the right candidate most of the organizations right. are not right in front of that and when you say that a friend it is not structured here you might have to work little more you'll be working on cutting edge technologies you'll have a lot of freedom and all those things we give them a checklist and i always ask them where do you fit in this scheme of things as no and some people say arvind uh, i've been in the xyz where i've been working on some technology but then why i came here is i was told and a lot of my friends are telling me that you work in cutting edge technology so that excites me so when you see the purpose is in alignment or in sync with the organization thing you get the best <coughs> most of the times yes. we just look at closing one position which is wrong so this is something which i tell insist my team members also so i have my close uh, i have my talent acquisition head deba also devasri is her name so she also insist that we get the best talent in our organization and then again it's a flow of talent development talent engagement and total rewards all these four functions which gets aligned to ensure the people are committed skilled and motivated that's great that's great now uh, i have answered your question uh, no no you, you you answered it perfectly actually you covered the point which i should have been asked but then it's it's, it's nice that you covered see my uh, my question over here is like uh, one point that you made is that when you see us told you that you know it's it's an unstructured environment would you like to work i would say like it's not an unstructured environment it's an opportunity for to create your own structure as well oh, because God. i have worked with awesome. i have worked with startups i have worked with growing companies i've seen been a part of the company that have grown stupendously you know br- uh, brilliant minds coming together things are always not perfect because you're not a fortune 500 firm so you don't have specialists for every go thing that you see you know Absolutely. for every single thing for one person single person takes a decision and that's also learning curve where if you are coming even if you are coming from harvard university you still have to hustle somewhere right book, book right. as you said book, book center is will not teach you a lot of things what practical no. knowledge can give you right it's because pure every person we are excellent we are pure your experience and, and, and the and sachin just to add on to your fantastic thought point very important thing is if you look at generation z and millennials they were not like baby boomers you cannot exactly. their excitement i am sure i had i have been uh, teaching across a lot of universities i go to couple i have been part of board of studies in couple of organizations not so what i feel is right now you look at generation z it's not that they are just looking for the high end kind of organizations they want to see whether this serves my purpose now it's a purpose driven organizations so they feel if my purpose is not served and people don't nowadays children are not looking at getting all german cars at their house or maybe ha- having 100 crores or this <laughs> but they feel if as long my stimulation my curiosity everything is question whether i can contribute let me work for my organization and whenever you see that is coming to an end they'll start looking out uh, i think it's more related to you know where people just want to be a part of success story so when you go Absolutely. when they these generations generation z when they grow up they just want to turn back and look you know i was a part of this organization That's i did right. that i was there when, when it was yeah. happening that and exciting. this also comes from the, the thing that salaries. things what yeah yeah this also comes from the very fact that you know our generation millennials because i am a millennial uh, i have heard stories about bill gates you know steve job the big influencer and many more right. here in india we had sir narayan murthy that's right azim prem ji ratan tata you know those were the things that we have seen them and we always wanted to emulate them so and the generation that came after us like 10 years later they were in a better position because the generation before us was struggling for jobs generation before that just got independence and they were looking for job at any anything right now this generation already has something at home like they have food on the table they have 
Indian cars, they have house. So they are not looking at, you know, uh, looking to build money. They just want to create a story and out of that probably take a leaf and then you know, do something outside if they can. Right. Absolutely. So that's, 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 that's my way of thinking. And that's how no, absolutely. it's. Absolutely. Uh, you're to the point. You nailed it right. Actually, it's, uh, they, they're looking for an insane experience at the end of the day and whether it's fulfilling my drives and purpose. They're very focused in terms of their purpose. Nothing else. It's like uh, uh, the Simon Sinek person who says, I mean, the, or the guy who is in the TED talk who says, it's a purpose driven. So they, they, they know it very clearly. If it is not, they'll say goodbye even first next day in the organizations. So you would have seen earlier our parents used to say, Are, what did you do? Why did you leave your job? Now they'll say, no, that's okay. I'll look out for some other job. So that is what, as you rightly said, that is what they're looking at. If not, that so is what they're looking for. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, uh, now the leaders has to be much more careful. Like you know, Absolutely. they just cannot think and sit down. You know, see if he needs money, he'll be here. Otherwise, he can exit, right? So that thought has gone. Even up, uh, even if the company is not as large as any other company, even if it's a small startup with 50, 60 people, the functionality and the leaders' core value has to be very clear. What where are they heading into and how they want to lead this organization because people really don't want to be a part of something where it's going haywire. They just want to have a goal driven organization. Okay. We are starting off slow. We are going to be number one in this particular space. And this is how we are going to go at any cost. So this is, we have to achieve no matter what, right? That's, right. That's something they want to be a part of. Correct. And just one more thing to add on. It's about consistency of purpose followed by consistent communication. They want to have, they don't want any kind of lack of transparency. They would like to see everything communicated then and there because if you look at the most important ingredient of an generation Z and millennials, they want everything instant gratification. So if they mm -hmm. feel that the communication is not there from a leader's perspective, the communication is not given upfront, probably they'll, that becomes a problem. And you know, it's a social world from WhatsApp to everything, the news would be like the leaders didn't communicate. So it's a very much okay. more dangerous world, which we are living at. So communication with consistency is the key. Okay. So now when you talk about communication, so how do you communicate? I'll tell you how, why, why I'm asking this question. There are some, not every time is a good, good old news. It's sometimes difficult to communicate certain things. Okay. We are in this situation. There is a situation. Uh, there's a situation in hand and this is all we have to talk about. Right. So how do you communicate that? You know, it's very, very important that you communicate even the bad news in a good. How do you do that? Uh, See, uh, we uh, first and foremost, what has to be done is it should not be done by HRs. Most of the times we feel, okay, HRs would be the people who are basically change agents. Let them do it. No, they would like to see everything coming from the top. Because if okay. leaders themselves are not able to, they themselves are not convinced. And if it is not coming from them, people will not get convinced. And Sachin, let me make it very clear. One important thing which every viewers would appreciate is your action speaks more than your words. That's a very valid point. Your, your action speaks more than your words. If my leader is saying something with conviction, I would look at his body language and I'll get convinced. And that has not been seen. So if my if I am actually stumbling, if my communication is not upfront, it can be easily made out. So very important thing is leaders have to communicate with a lot of, uh, what do you say? They have to take the call first and they have to stick to the purpose with the values. If I am communicating, uh, communicating like we are, we will try to save jobs. We will not have cuts. I really have to mean it. I really mean it. I cannot do something from the back saying that let's cut something like this and all. So that is very important and consistency. So it has to be constrained. So what happens is let's suppose when we had this kind of issues in our organization, what we decided we had consistent. We also have something called <clears throat> very soon. We are going to launch something called virtual voice. Virtual voice is a new initiative wherein every 15 days, CEO, COO, and our CTO, and everyone, everyone is going to have talks with the entire population, 340 across, not the other population in the US, no, but then at least in India, we're going to have 15 days communication wherein our delivery managers, our so-called CEO, HR, everyone has to keep the momentum. They, we need to tell them what exactly is happening from the customer standpoint. How many of you have won some awards during this time? So consistent communication has to be there. And if it is coming from leaders on every bit by bit, people will get convinced. I'm sure you'll also appreciate that Sachin, because that's if right, there is right. no communication at this point of time, then we are losing out a lot of things. And especially in this pandemic, that's the most important thing. Be communicative as far as possible. And if you have to pass on message, say it, don't hide it. I think they see a lot of values in leaders. So even if you have to say something, 
if you are convinced and if you are able to make them convinced they will not question you but if you are hiding and if you don't want to say the truth from your end and then but then you are asking hr to say it or if someone else to say it then probably all equations gets questioned so that's what most of leaders fail also they don't have the courage to do that direct conversation which is very very important as per the current pandemic it has to come so, from uh, them and has to be cascaded okay so um so who is taking the initiative in your company at present to communicate the thing that are that are happening right now i'm not saying that you might be taking some uh, extreme steps at this point i definitely don't hear any negative news about you guys but definitely there are there, there is going to be a concern because overall the market is struggling at present which okay. is across the globe and which we all can see everywhere right because i am also doing my own business and uh, with my own company uh, we are also seeing a lot of changes uh, a, 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 a sudden drop in the demand a sudden drop in the demand and everything and even if you hold high highest value for integrity and everything there is something called as economics which always plays yeah the right. 99% of the role in any organization 99% or so let's say even at, at least 80% right so how are you handling that situation at present okay very good question <laughs> again such a you nail me down <laughs> so yeah so a uh, very important thing is uh, so such in what i'll just tell you what excited me when my ceo told me this he said arvind it's not even i don't mind taking 10 to 20% or 40% of my this one cut at this point of time i wouldn't mind even doing it for my leaders including me uh, i but my only philosophy is the last resort of the ship would be to ensure there will be cut of jobs so when exactly. that that is the core if your uh, what do you say your true north is there with you i am sure everyone is with him now including the top leaders we agreed they didn't even say this he told only one thing for me the first thing is not to do any job cuts because i and the best thing is not because he was not okay with that but what he said is my people will struggle outside they will not get a job if i lay them off so let me be that kind of so that, that shows empathy and kindness and at this point of time pandemic i understand there can be cutoffs but then still if a leader is showing being empathetic and kind there will be a lot of people to support him or her and most exactly, of times exactly. when when you have when you see anything like a pandemic and all those things the first thing comes in your mind is to cut everything operationally as you rightly said the economics work in terms of cutting costs and all those things but if you try to tell them the logic saying that people are ready to even and 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 in our case also i am sure our associates i can proudly say that our associates or our employees would be happy to take cuts because it's not because we are going to planning to do that but the issue is the fundamental thing is we will not lay off i think if we are exactly. going to that whole thing people will accept your logic because and that comes from your heart you really need to have the kindness and empathy and that cannot be taught in any kind of business schools and i think during this kind of situations those two important facets really stands out and that really differentiates oh. great, good leaders from the great leaders okay that's great so i think it's uh, it's, it's about uh, coming together of an organization at this pandemic time uh, crisis time i would say coming together of everyone in the crisis time you know to sail together and see that's what right. we can do the worst the worst thing is to lay off any single person out there it could be anybody from right from Absolutely. the receptionist to the staff boy anybody yes. he, does, yes. he doesn't want to lay off he loves yeah. them so so said and then one good thing is what we emphasize is when we are going through the ship we would like everyone to be productive so that's where cross skilling and reskilling kind of things definitely we would insist so that some exactly. people, let's assume if you have x number of if one or two projects i have been ran down that's one time we always say associates don't worry at least what we would expect is to learn something so this is one thing where we normally tell our associates we need to what do you say buckle yourself and then maybe you can learn something new at this point of time you need you cannot say that i'm only a dot net guy i will not learn react you might have to really <laughs> move out from your comfort zone and this is one thing which really demands it you never know probably you will become an expert in react at some point of time that is something which we normally emphasize also Because exactly you know, and now uh, yeah. uh, sorry exactly so my my question related to this was basically about training so now how are you skilling your people what kind of training are you giving them what are what are your thoughts on that fantastic question so we actually are training our associates both people who actually are on bench and uh, others also on a regular basis right now so we have all kind of tech so two sets of training is happening at this point of time one is basically in terms of we are tying with a lot of uh, external agencies to bring in uh, courses like mindfulness and all those things for our lady associates and all and also we have some i mean 
uh, what do you say some kind of anxiety and all those kind of soft skills which is happening on the other side but technical side we have we are ex- in investing lot of money over training our associates at all levels at this point of time in and also oh. what we have done is we have a skill repository wherein we try to see okay and um, we are going to have this kind of new clients coming up or within the same project it is going to have something new dimensions let train him or her so that he or she can really pick it up and then move forward so th- seeing that into account so my uh, talent development expert uh, anila so she also does all this kind of thing so she does skill framework first and then she tries to map it with the dms delivery managers so that we understand thick of things and then move forward so it is not just so randomly this- okay let's assume this is the hot technology let me do it no we have no. we go slow and then we do the right things that's very important basically we are tr- trying to match uh, which person can match which particular training depending upon their personality and their comfort that's right that's right and ability to learn it, right because yes. that also that also comes to a point that you are you are just not they are just not employee you are actually nurturing talent for future as well right not of you are observing every it's a talent every, every, pipeline it's a fantastic uh, oh god statement. it's a talent pipeline for your future requirements also and people are also ready to accept the fact because you actually ideal i mean if you can say if you want you can either sit ideal but then people who, i mean i am sure you would also agree we only have engineers so engineers are very curious to learn so everyone wants to keep themselves occupied so they are also doing their bit and they, that's an hand on hand on kinds of hands on kind of training is also provided to them okay that's good that's good that's that's something that i want to wanted to know Uh, you know for a lot of people i'll be interviewing a lot of actually people uh, from here on especially the hr because for some reason i believe that people are not thinking about hrs nowadays because they are the people who are going through a lot of stress at present i'll tell you why because a lot of my friends are into it so the communication that is happening through their desk is actually somebody is telling them to do what they want to do but through hr so the bad person or a good person whatever you can think is the hr I, I don't <laughs> But then I, I, I mean I I I I always feel uh, see uh, one thing I am very proud to be part of this organization is my boss never tells me what to do that ex- that's a problem with me now he never says he has raised the benchmark so every day comes with an excitement for me to do something great in my organization and I'm proud to say that and that's what I always tell my people also if someone says that you have to do a job that means you are not contributing so no more you are exactly. loving your job So that's exactly a, exactly that's a most important thing in this generation also your manager should ensure your people are stimulated motivated to come and do something great not something good exactly exactly and people should try to take it in more in a more positive way now since you told that you know when someone tells you to do your job that means that person has taken interest to tell you and second of all you have somewhere shown that boss you are not doing your job properly as well or you have exactly. lost it right you you are not in that club that you used to be right something like that right correct so that's that's the small that's more important now i just wanted to understand like who's uh, how do you handle grievances at your organization grievances is, uh, is like you have a community you have a leader how do you handle that yeah so uh, the same uh, talent development person uh, who has actually she her name is anla again so what she has done is basically we have a framework and we have a committee also we have uh, one lady committee uh, i mean delivery manager and then myself as an hr and then uh, we have four members including her so what we do is basically whenever you have any kind of grievances coming up and grievances literally we have differentiated because we have posters everywhere in our organizations grievance is not sexual harassment <laughs> so most of the times mm-hmm. that is one thing if my boss tells me to do something and if it is not done i ask her why it was not done it doesn't amount to a grievance or it doesn't amount to even a sexual harassment those kind of first and foremost every year we do that kind of this one also so what we have been doing is basically we continuously as a nudge we send posters to our organize i mean associates in terms of differentiating what is an posh what is a grievance and we always okay. give him message saying that in case you find some kind of issues like this which is a b c kind of categories of things please feel free to write to either of us in terms of this and then from there what happens is the grievance is taken very seriously it is very confidential our SOS, our so called hr person takes him or her outside not even in the inside the organization understands things in detail does a lot of cross investigations and this is informed first in my level probably and then at the end if things are not moving ahead then it goes to the management so That's most right. of the time but- yeah 
Good. But the grievance is also here is like, you know, somebody is not happy with the immediate leader, is not able to perform under them, you know, or he's not happy with his uh, payout or uh, timing. He wants, has having some trouble, you know, in personal life and that is actually showing on the professional life as well, right? Correct. You can only do good in your professional life when your personal life is, you know, very well balanced. Absolutely. There are only few individuals who can manage both and there are few good who will never ne affect either of them, right? And nine, most of them don't follow in that top category, you know, where people know how to balance everything or would not let effect, right? But rest yeah. do fall in that other category where they cannot do any, uh, don't know how to balance it and it really affects vice versa here and there. Correct. So, grievances here also want to understand like, how do you, um, let's say for example, I would give you an example. Some people are not happy with the reward or the award that they get for their work. They want more. And they, have their own reasons for that. So how do you maintain it? It's, it's, it's pampering. No. Do you pamper yeah. them? Do you reward them? How do you do that? Oh, that's a very important secret which you have asked me to reveal. Okay. So uh, such a very important thing. Let me just tell you one thing is basically even for grievance and posh, I'm sure every organization is doing it, but we do it as part of a calendar. We have calendarized this particular two things is basically every quarter we have something called grievance session for managers and grievance po prevention of sexual posh sessions for our managers also at all levels, which has been done by internal as well as external person. Why we are doing it and even for the people who get promoted, the first line managers, because that's where most of the times the issues co come up. Because let's assume if my friend has become a manager, immediately my ego will not allow to accept him or her. And there are exactly. conflicts. We have seen it. Let me exactly. give you a clear yeah. example. So it, 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 it happens in the mid-size organization. Yeah. Yes. So, so taking those kind of cases into account, what has been done judiciously is basically we try to understand if these kind of things are there. First time managers, they we try to give them a lot of case studies and we do a lot of role plays also. So that way, that means their perspectives get bright, brightened up and they are able to see better picture also. And then what we do is after six months, we take feedback and survey from their juniors as well as their seniors so that we understand whether he's really putting him or herself in the right position or right title before we really give him the title in system for the six months he or she really has to prove it it will not get demoted we will again we don't mind extending it but if a wrong okay. person is coming up and he has a lot of grievances cases against him or any kind of posh, then we are not setting the right expectation. And this is something exactly. we try to set the right expectation for everyone in our organization. So performance is not the performance is or is not the only bar. It's the overall you social. It. Absolutely, it's not the performance, which is not the what. It is the why, how you behave. The exp, the skills and everything is good, but the behavioral part has to be because when you are saying someone is a team leader or someone is actually a manager. That has to be demonstrated. It cannot be like you start demanding things. You have to work in a team. You have to be comp You have to do something in a collaborative manner. You co-create things. All those things is my very very important, Sachin. Oh, that's great. That's great. Now, uh, just wanted to understand more, like in terms of um, people management. Do you give any kind of training to them? Do you also impart your own experience because? Indirectly, you are actually managing the entire company, people of the entire company, including your own <laughs> boss, so that he doesn't lose it. This guy is yes. so you are a kind of a bridge. See, we do that. We do that. Actually, we see this is one time uh, the training which I was just informing you. We take it very seriously because first time managers are the play. It's an actually it's a trajectory where either you can make it or break it. So it has to be done very sensitively. So basically, when you get promoted, also we try to give them the training and all those things, and that's how we try to build those build and nurture those kind of talents. And wherever you see flaws directly myself and the immediate delivery head try to mentor them. They said, okay, this is what we are getting the feedback because we cannot say the names of the people associates under the exactly. we say generally, this is the feedback and this is your average score because everything they want to see the qualitative quantitative manner. So we have an, I mean, system around that. And then probably we inform them and probably if that is also not happening, probably we'll start doing some kind of shadowing and all those things, wherein the delivery manager directly comes to him, starts helping him in terms of behavioral, uh, this one also, behavioral uh, changes also. Okay, that's great. Now, um, important part over here is like, you know, uh, since this industry is so stressful, like highly stressful, right? And uh, it also breaks down easily. There's one war, there is somewhere, there is one bad news anywhere. And 
it can just go like that we have seen in 2008 financial crisis we have seen the slow down from 2000 you know uh, 16 17 18 19 now it is already pandemic there there, there was a uh, news about slow down as well uh, a small slow down was there here and there as well but then how do you how do you manage people in in, in this situation because that's more, that's more important because even the first time managers fdms or you know a junior leader or a senior manager they also have a certain feeling you know end of the day they all are human beings is the captain of the board uh, the ceo or the owner he knows exactly where it is heading and he does he does takes all the storms head on and you know not let other people affect right but then there there is always a quite uh, things you know that's boiling down down there because the things are not clear so how do you manage that i just want to know how do you manage people in crisis situation because this is very very important after this when i will ask you a question you understand why i asked this that's the most important okay. how are you managing it okay another great question uh, very important for the current situation actually uh, see uh, such an as i rightly uh, informed earlier very important thing is first and foremost my ceo actually tells and he believes in it what he says is there is only one thing which which really needs to happen in terms of pandemic is basically consistent communication and be very honest also so very important thing is earlier when you have delivery and all those things people never used to get time to discuss with your own team members so now he has made a point that we'll have this virtual connect which is going to kick start every 15 days we are going to connect with the entire population in india second thing is basically the delivery managers have to do a call with the entire set of portfolios are sorry business projects and all those things and give us an update every wednesday every wednesday we have something called a portfolio discussions but then he also sits early he never used to find time but then now he is taking time because i think whatever he says preaches he is trying to do it it's not this he is just trying to do it so that these kind of things are something which people will mm-hmm. take these are the small cues from which we can learn what leadership is all about i'm not trying to brag but then still the consistent communication if he is taking time and trying to address things the leaders under him would also try to see okay our own leader is t- taking time i should also find some time for my associates and what we have been doing from an hr side is wave one we just finished wave one wherein every associate were directly interacted with my entire team of nine as nine team members under me they had called them they started inquiring how are things and this really was a fantastic thing so some of the associates started telling us we never expected hr calling us at this point of time you are finding time for calling us so it's at the end it's a touch point uh, sachin people how big you are how much tech savvy you are social thing is very common in human beings so making exactly. a call making a call or just saying how are you how is your family and coming people live in a video all these things are something which we do i'm not saying these are big things but really matter oh, exactly small, small small thing do create a, a great impact for a course of time taken into consideration right Uh, yeah. because someone is definitely giving their personal time to you and you know taking interest in what you do especially if it's a senior senior batch now the following question that i want to ask is like uh, now you have cleared my doubts you know the question that i had a lot of times is like how do you manage people like now how do you grow them how do you grow them during this time see uh, uh, again such an important thing here is some most of the times we hello yes sir yeah, yeah most of the times we such an we try to say see projects are not there you do decide whatever you have to do sit like this so very important thing is when your manager does upfront constructive conversation with your associates you will try to understand what excites them what is the technology they are looking at and if your manager is sincere as i said your actions proves i mean your action speaks more than your words if i am very much caring about sachin probably sachin will reciprocate correct and this is exactly. uh, during this pandemic very important thing is i need to talk to them i need to tell him boss this particular project is not there probably unfortunately or fortunately because of the client pressure this is not there but there is something which you are expecting i want you to upskill i want you to reskill yourself and this is what i am planning to do how comfortable are you and it's not this dumping that in him or her consistently monitoring that is he comfortable where has he reached whether he is really doing his great whether you are doing the touch points calling him and then do it i am sure people will do a fantastic job they'll start that's loving good. you and they will do things for you <laughs> that's the miracle of the whole thing it is not they're doing for themselves he will feel that ore more than this he is one person is really taking time for me for he is taking time for my development let me just prove my best for him or her 
that again differentiates good from great leaders and development is only self driven it can it is not extrinsic motivation it has to come from within but said and done there is a pigmalion effect wherein the managers can nurture it it is like self fulfilling right, prophecy right. if i expect great things from my team they will deliver it and i am a firm believer of that and you should have that exactly. high and that behavior will start projecting it that's right that's right now talking about jobs so do you have any openings during this pandemic for any kind of we position have, that you might have recruitment is still on it is not that uh, but, numbers which we had which 60 70 it is still around 30 40 and all those things we still have around uh, what kind of opening is, what kind of openings have, are this we have around uh, dot nets and uh, javas and all those reacts and all those kind of uh, opening still we have this is for development or this is for testing or this is for something we else have, uh, for mostly we have it for uh, development only sachin De- development okay so you, you still are hiring you're looking to hire for your bangalore office and yes. kerala office that's right we are still expanding but then if you ask me i should be very honest not the hiring spree which we had earlier that probably exactly you, because right now we have a pool which has to be uh, reskilled also so taking that, that's when the skill repository which was started by our talent development person is very useful because she knows exactly this skill is available and what level of competency is that skill and that we can utilize elsewhere so that is also helping okay. us so because at and this point how, of time your headcount optimization is the need of the hour and this uh, is the yeah, maximum of utilization of your human resources scarce resources <laughs> that's scarce <right. laughs> yeah because maximum utilization of scarce actually it's again the war of talent that was written by mckenzie still it is there great talents are really scarce really scarce they're scarce that's right that's right now how do you uh, how often do you do training at your office just not about technology training going from one domain to another but also in terms of training like soft skills training or any other training so often do you do you emphasize on training what's your uh, culture like in terms of training uh, you see, uh can you hear me sachin yes yes no so, so average right now average level so if you are speaking of an average number of trainings in technical it would be in a quarter is minimum 4 minimum 4 mm-hmm. and then uh, another thing is basically in terms of uh, other set of soft skills it's around 3 to 2 uh, to 3 only because we don't want people to get so much this one also so 3 and 4 and 3 is the uh, i mean uh, approx number is what i would say but we are still doing it and we believe at this point that organizations should invest in that okay that, that that's, that's something that i also be talking about uh, because you see if you don't train right now then the the amount of time that you always creep for while you're in office i'm not getting boss i'm not getting time to do anything it's it's going to go waste I don't look at this pandemic situation as a problem look at it as an opportunity to learn because you're That's sitting at true. home and uh, learn something extra apart from what you're going to be learning like cleaning cooking that you have to do it but apart from that you have another skills instead of sleeping extra just learn something new take one task a day one chapter a day slowly slowly you will cover that and at end of the day once it gets over you get a good feel it's a feeling Task of completed. accomplishment it's a feeling of yeah. self development yeah yeah that's that's more important because and such a sorry uh, such no, no no problem good basically this is how the managers also take a lot of uh, great managers also make a lot of difference they might say do it it will pay off people might hmm. look at this okay already i am feeling bored nothing is happening everywhere i am seeing the negative news but they are not able to see that there is a life after corona also people have slowly started exactly to, everything is picking up i have been telling this to a lot of my students wherever i have to address in a lot of business schools right these days if you say uh, corona is taking my whole year that's wrong because after this also now everyone is saying how will you come back what are the precautionary measures you are going to have of course yes we have to live with the fact that that is going to be there for some months but then of course yes a lot of <laughs> Uh, pharmaceutical companies have coming out with their own this one so i'm sure within say by december i am very optimistic about that because i am already you would have seen i am in office now so yeah, i am op- i mean i am very optimistic and this is one time one good time for all associates to really reskill upskill themselves you have to really cool. take some time and really do it not wait for Whoa. something and that kind of time and when things start picking up the momentum is going to be very huge it is going to be really big speed so we have to really be agile for that okay and what of what kind of skills do you are you looking at your company when you hiring someone like apart from the job opening that you have done but there are certain skills that you look for right like uh, anything particular let's say for example algorithm situation wise 
this interview what we are doing right now is going to go to a lot of colleges and university and students i am going to make sure it goes there because Fantastic. something has to happen and so we at net talk are taking this initiative to let students know let the job seekers know let the people who have been laid off by the organizations due to some reasons let them know there there is a bright side at the end of the tunnel yes you know don't lose hope it may not be in Uh, right now, but it is there. Just be prepared for that to grab the opportunity when it comes your way. Don't be caught off guard. Yeah, I didn't believe that it didn't come. So I just wanted to under understand, like uh, end of the day, what kind of skills are you looking at? It, it. Let's say, for example, in the next six months, you want to do hire someone. Right now, the pre is slightly low. So what do you want to do? Mm. See this. Uh, I I I've been always seeing this from all my tenures and stints. but this is something which we has come from my organization dna also starting from a ceo to our talent acquisition head also debasri what we have been insisting in any kind of associate at any levels okay let it be an intern to an sc to a tl to a pm what we try to do is whether he or she is able to learn and learn and relearn very very important okay. <clears throat> because if you say about these words called reskilling and upskilling that requires a mindset also and exactly it, exactly the thing boils down to growth mindset sachin if it's some and i i'm in my uh, though i have to say this because don't feel that i'm literally saying more about my ceo but then i have to say this he has been telling me only one thing arvind hire someone for will skill exactly I, yeah see i i i i can match you more there because uh, i had to rep- i tell you a small story i had i had a, a guy coming from other team to my team because he was not happy with his manager or he quit something like that a little weak in, uh, in the communication and i had a feedback about him from a long time uh, but then i i just knew you know because i was also not good when i started off i knew i think it's this it's some thing that takes you over what you don't have technical skill is just that the spirit you know to go go further so i also look for will will i'll give you the skill if you are a good manager you will give the skill in in a short shorter period of time if you are a good teacher but you can't give the will to anybody right because people come with skill but they don't come with will but people you will find people with will with no skill so that's the opportunity grab them give them the skill and let them run with the heart that's right as fast as as fast as possible and a uh, skill is something which we can really build if you have the will exactly exactly hello Yeah. So skill is something you are telling that. Skill, yeah, you are telling that skill is something that you can exactly. Very important thing is basically. Uh, very important thing is basically. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So skill is something which uh, can always be trained because you have so many things. But will always take someone to the next level. If you have willingness to stretch, if you have willingness to learn, automatically you will see the whole world is supporting you. So I always tell my students also. as long you have the learning appetite curiosity you will succeed it is called dice determination okay insight curiosity engagement that's great i learned something new today dice <laughs> i i always try to measure it if someone is determined persistent and this is the question which you have to ask anyone who is coming for an interview they have written many things you tell me when did you have to do a team work if someone looks up and says okay i have to cook up a story it's easily found he is lying so that means he is not determined in such right. means you should never ask him straight forward questions you should ask him uh, what is the th- another way of doing things he might come out with a blunder but then it's okay so insight is very important insight from your teaching your insight is not coming from concepts insight is coming from the experience so higher you go up at a pm and a pfm and maybe leaders and all those kind of delivery heads you should be asking them what is a different way of attack most of the times that is important and that is challenging okay. third curiosity it never kills the cat curiosity if you there you can easily make out whether this person will be a potential to the next level or and very important thing said and then uh we should not hire people for performance we should hire people for who can really take up the next level of this one we earlier days we used to hire people for performance now it's time to hire people for potential because you are not okay. hiring him of her to keep him in the roles for 2 years we want to see whether he can exactly do. and last is engagement how much depth clarity he or she brings in his or set of knowledge 
If someone says exactly. I'm a exactly. PM, he should also know the people management. He should know. He should because now that's a challenge for HR. HR should also understand PMI. HR should also understand what is because I should not be bragging, but then I have actually thanks to uh, NIT also. So I learned a little bit of programming. So I normally ask students all kind of questions. So sometimes in <laughs> when I have to go for intern hiring or in a colleges, I normally ask them C plus plus to Java. You cannot say I forgot. I I forgot that. It's exactly. very very important. I asked that. It's basic. Said, this is HR interview. I said no. I can ask. It's a basic interview. Yeah, the basic foundation you cannot because engagement is all about how much engaged you are with the topics, your concepts. So this dice framework, Sachin, is something beautifully you can apply it anywhere. That's great. That's great. That's that's great to know. Now, and I am sure that this you can students can do it. Even faculty members can think over it. If someone is really determined to succeed, he will succeed. Now you have pandemic. One, two, three. He will still succeed. Inside, exactly. not going by theory and concepts. He is able to bring uh, something creative, think out of the box. He will again make a difference. Curiosity is the most important thing, and that's why you see Elon Musk creating a dent in the universe. You never thought a guy saying that I'm going to send a human mankind to Mars. That's a curiosity which mm. made it happen. Finding exactly. the engagement. You got to and learn space. And All space travel that we are talking about. You all students should learn the concepts. You cannot say I will not learn it. Then you should not be doing an MBA. You should not be doing anything. Elon Musk still applies physics, maths, everything to whatever he takes, and that's why he is creating history. It's not that he is just bluffing in the air. He tries to apply everything and whatever he has learned. More than doing uh, leadership kind of things, he does. He, if you can look at his videos, he says 90% he spends his time in engineering work. So see the amount of excitement he carries. See the amount of so basically, uh, so basically, ninety percent of the thing he manages his own own work. He is not looking at anything. You can see the video. Yeah, I was so because he is saying I have leaders to manage other things. I and if you look at, he is very ruthless. There is a book uh, named Edge in which one of the authors goes and meets him. He says, "I don't have time. You get lost." But unfortunately, she is a professor from Harvard. She said, "I almost cried." But then he called me back. He was he thought that someone has come to market or something. But he says he'll even for one second and one minute he is very curious. He will not spend his time unnecessarily. See the way exactly. people see things, and he is so super engraved and enriched, in, and he's so in, in insight into his set of things. He knows in and out what SpaceX is, what Tesla is. He will not say because he doesn't do management things, but whatever he does, he is a master of it. And that's one thing which all students, irrespective of any kind of disciplines, you should be doing it. That would be finance, marketing, anything, and even for BTECs. I always say, whatever you are doing, it ensure. You may not get what you like, but there are always chances that start loving what you have, and that's why you can exactly do that. that 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 ninety percent of people are in the situation to do that, right? <laughs> and uh, that's where it is. Does now we are get we are getting to the last part of the segment of this show, so sure. I will not take much of your time now. No, uh, we no. have covered people management, your company's brand values, and the job opening that you have of thirty forty mostly into technology, not into sales or anything else. And people can directly go to your website, which I'll giving yes. giving the in descriptions and everything where they can apply and contact you as well. And that's how they'll follow. Now, uh, be, I know, tell me more about uh, the future future of technology since you are into a technology, and I know your company well because I was working. In the same area, what your company was working in, so I, I I I kind of knew your company. So just wanted to know, like, what is the future of technology? What's the what's the the role the HR are going to play? Obviously, you guys uh, HR are not mostly into technology, but then being a part of technology company, then they, they no need to need to know bit what are they hiring for at least, right? So I would want to know what what are the future plans for Rapid Value Solutions? How are they uh, coming up with new in terms of expansion plans? Uh, are they looking to expand more from 350 to 700 at, at what time uh, what are the new projects any of the excitement excited projects that you can discuss about okay let me just cut this into two parts and then i'll answer it first part such as basically we definitely have growth plans at this point of time but then it would be very phased it would be done in a phased manner seeing because uh, one important thing basically right now even the best of the best economists are not able to figure out how this pandemic is evolving Unfortunately, we okay. were at low numbers now because of lockdown coming to an end. You will see more numbers going up. So the track, the, the the way things are right now, you cannot map it. So keeping that in mind, we are going a bit slow, but then that never stops us to do great things. So what we are seeing is right now in a particular project, if it is only say one particular technology nowadays, we are also seeing people looking for data analytics, 
lot of exactly deep, this i mean deep learning and all those things so we are expanding AI. yeah so ai and all those things absolutely and rp and iot and all those things so see we exactly. see we are not only saying this is going to be our area niche area and but then we always try to say that we have cloud everything like what i said cams is something which has been there and i also gets added to that social media cloud analytics and iot also so we are spreading it and as and when our customers demand okay let's assume x number if x client is saying uh, we see this is also coming up and decision science or an analytics is coming up can you support us we'll definitely ensure our associates are trained reskilled on that new technology and then we will build on that said and done that is something which we are planning at this point of time but expansions of course yes touchwood things are going great so we'll definitely see it because i think pandemic is there i will never say that it is not there it is li- it is little scary but then of course in some point of time it has to have its own flattening so it will happen i am very optimistic of that now answering the second point very very important point for hr is how do you engage this kind of workforce engagement is going to be one of the important things engagement doesn't mean celebrating festivals celebrating birthday parties it's beyond that this point of exactly. time, how do, how do you build careers how do you excite them to do great jobs how do you make the exactly. purpose more committed let them come and mm. contribute to your organization so these are the few questions or challenges which is going to be thrown out to the hr second important thing is basically hr should be technology proponent i think exactly. that's why technology hated me because i'm not so tech, tech savvy maybe that's the issue <laughs> it went off <laughs> so yeah so very important thing is you need to ask questions how do you make your so called generation z and millennials along with the previous cultural generations how do you make them engaged skilled and motivated second mm. and make them very purposeful driven pl- along with allowing them to contribute not come and do a job the job mm. descriptions are going are going to be just another sheet of paper but then how do you make them contribute will determine your success in an organization then is That's basically right. challenge of antics every sentiments every perception everything needs to be mapped then you will you understand whether your people or your so called the most important talents are really contributing to your organization third very very important a learning for me also really need to understand the technical word world or something because it's very important what kind of technologies are evolving if someone says ai is there if a digital platform is there what exactly is that so you need to understand what kind of digital technologies are evolving what is it pivoting all about all those kind of words you should also be knowing it otherwise in exactly. this excel world it is going to be very very difficult exactly exactly now coming to that uh, tech savvy world that we are discussing right now uh, yeah. we have covered almost all the points that we are doing right now my the most important thing that i want to understand right now is like uh, how do you grow from now let's say for example this pandemic ends it it will it will there has to be some solution i think the global scientists are working something has to be done uh, there are going to be a lot of changes now uh, as you know we are working from home uh, there is always a communication problem because of the bandwidth you know uh, because of some or the other reason you know so how how are you maintaining that uh, uh, what do you call how are you syncing people in that uh, together so that they don't lose motivation and they keep uh, working together that's 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 something that i would like to understand how how are you bringing in people together see uh, from hr side we plan to have different engagement events i mean uh, engagement in the sense like our uh, td person or a td uh, person always try to see there are new new kind of courses new kind of uh, because at this point of time the most important problem which is going to uh, i mean i mean i don't know such an event i've seen the most important problems which we are going to hit is basically loneliness now exactly so, harvard and a lot of other colleges i mean research harvard business school depression has, uh, d- depression would be a part of yeah so that means there is a high importance of element of bringing mindfulness so we are bringing those kind of courses which is not the natural ones which we have to ensure people are free from that kind of anxiety syndrome and all those things because people some other people be, i'll tell you my case itself from march i am only in cochin i was supposed to be in bangalore oh. so i am only seeing me myself and arvind warrior every day so <laughs> i think <laughs> so your family is in bangalore Yes, absolutely. So my family okay. is there. So my parents are also with my wife. My wife was supposed okay. to be coming here on twentieth. So what it taught me is like now I am the only son. So it has taught me to clean my own clothes, 
now i understand when i was asking my mother to cook these things now i'll never ask her i understand the pain so it taught me a exactly. lot of skilling upskilling also <laughs> second time <laughs> and these are life skills which are going to be helpful in future for Absolutely. any any time now i have told my parents also when you are back i'll cook food for you earlier days when she used to cook i used to shout at her saying that no this is not right i want that this and that now i'll never say that i understand so i can empathize more so that pandemic has been... actually uh, pandemic has also given us uh, to time to understand what uh, what exactly is important in your life and what yes. you can live without and what you have made things like you know i cannot live with this and that we are actually living with that you are not going to party out in the weekend you are not spending your money you are uh, you, the important skill in life is to have a life skill itself how to live the life and which includes you know basics that we follow right now washing your clothes taking up care of your house cleaning uh, talking to people communicating with people you might be lonely but still you have to show that mental strength and call others and say nothing happens and correct see how how long you going to face this i mean at some point of time everyone wants to and as uh, uh, sachin i was saying it's a social world we need to get connected exactly. and i'm sure because the whole world is working on from pune the serum institute to the pfizers of the world everyone the israel companies lot of people are working it and this will get this will this has to get over because it is not that whole 2020 or 21 we're going to suffer because god has given us lot of intellectual this one simulation at some point of time we'll curb it but that never means that we'll not come out of this so going back to your question very important thing is we try to do engagement and connectivity from our hr side on a regular basis oh okay. every morning we have something called i am sure most of the organization do it it's called the business continuity plan we do it meticulously because i feel if you don't do it people will not be there because there should be someone to listen to them also and there have been instances exactly. when we had issues our people had gone to some houses help them and all so i think these are the mm-hmm. small touch points which can make a lot of difference they are exactly. not looking for big big things okay, and there have been instances right. where people have taken back their uh, resignations also i am very really proud to say that some people say that you people show that kind of this one my i mean uh, the top leaders including i mean i mean my hr teams they call and start understanding whether you have some problems they inquire a lot about your family and all those things i feel these small touch points make lot of difference more than anything yeah, that's- communication the, is the key uh, exactly communication is the key is the key in every everywhere that i always yes. been telling if somebody asks me such in what training would you like to learn i said communication the words have certain strength that can change the course of life forever for you for yes. others as well so for some reason i i'm just fascinated with the the communication i have seen lot of people grow including our present prime minister he has used the words so nicely yes so carefully over a period of time that we all started following him and he became the prime minister of the land it's an art and such in rightly nailed this communication is where 90 most of the people fail 95% only because of this it's 99% let's, let's go that way 99% because 1% is the only leader the rest yes. 99% are followers <laughs> yeah that's right so that makes a difference you nailed it so i don't have to say much you nailed it yeah uh, now we are, we will we'll be closing on it soon so just a couple of questions now uh, uh, I just wanted to know, like, if somebody wants to join Rapid Valley, what are the two things they should? What What are the things? Not two things. What are the things they should have? What are the qualities they should have? First thing is dice, for sure. Oh, okay. Dice. Explain again so that they can understand these. Insight, curiosity, engagement. engagement. Actually, I have stolen okay. this from one of the articles which came in Harvard, but I normally apply it. It's okay. It's it's a normal one. Dice was anyways originated in India, so they have yes. taken a lot of things from here and they have rebranded and sold it. So yes, sir. So, you have so not that, taken it. You, you have actually uh, grabbed what was yours because they are not giving you right for this. <laughs> no, I'll be very honest. I, whenever I am stealing ideas, also I should give them. So uh, so a, a determination, insight, curiosity, and engagement. That is very okay. very important because we work on cutting edge technology. We really don't say it. I am sure every organization is working on that. But for a growing organization, that really matters, and that is something which is a pull factor for our associates. So okay, so dice is something that a person should know about it. And uh, any other qualities apart from that? Uh, from structure to unstructured kind of things. Learn, learn, and learn, learn unlearn, Absolutely. something like that. Learning, unlearning, and relearning. But basically, adapt adaptively. You nailed it. Absolutely yes. 
such and so okay. it's, it's not it's, yeah it's not flexibility it's basically adaptability, adaptability. that's it because if someone says i have to learn new technology you cannot say no i will not it's okay but then again tomorrow is not defined by one technology and you would have seen what amazons of the world they have so exactly. many ideas is coming up they have so many technologies microsoft to anything so you need to have that learning appetite to change yes. to, to learn unlearn and relearn to adapt as you right exactly. exactly but it involves it was a lot of mental strength you know uh, my request to everybody would be you know to make your people not only your colleagues but even your family members mentally strong to survive these things not only this pandemic this is just a you know it will just pass away two minutes you will not never know when you look back it will say like okay those days were like summer holidays for us Correct. you know we should all take unless uh, until you explore unless and, yeah, and exactly. one important thing is uh, such an i i forgot this is something a, re- a new book which i am le- uh, reading also right it's on experimentation again and how okay. this you have okay. to ex- explore and have an experimentation mindset a growth okay. mind a growth mindset always has to do experimentation if you don't exactly. have in your life it becomes monotony come on at some point of time you should leave dot net move to some other technology that uh, that flavors of life would make you an, uh, what do you say indispensable person that flavors will help you to grow in life and great okay. leaders are masters of correlation and how do you do your time management that's something that i want to uh, yeah that's a wrong you question. you are that's a wrong question you are wrong person no <laughs> that's a right question i'll tell I, i'll tell you why because if you are an hr Yes. You you open your inbox. You have hundred emails every day before you even come to login. That's right. And most of them, I will not discuss what those emails would be, but we all understand. Good one. <laughs> you have to, you you have to answer that email. Then you have to solve that problem. Then you have to talk to a lot of people, parties to solve that, and then you are also looking to learn. So then, how do you find your time? Because you have a young family and you are the only child. So how do you find time? That's important. Okay. uh see i i'm i'm a firm believer of one thing actually i maintain an uh excel sheet in which i track every mail whatever comes i actually put it in one this one and i just have open and close against dates open and close that excites mm-hmm. me because i cannot go to my management or senior management and my leader saying that arvind i i mean when they ask me i need to have an answer yes or no with a closure so when you have that uh, planning mechanism in your mind and planning doesn't mean that you write somewhere and do a lot of follow up and all those things you do something you should be very meticulous in that and what i try to do is basically uh, from at least 9 to 6 that time i normally devote for a lot of work and in between if mm-hmm. i see some work is coming down i do a little bit of reading also so that i can share that valuable learnings see i i, I mean i feel this is very evolving role for an hr leader because your success is not depending on what you do your success depend in, depends on making your team great your team members exactly. great. so every day exactly. i try to give them a lot of gyan which is very important because i i am not doing for this one but i feel no you have to take uh, as a leader you have to take the initiative somewhere some people yes. may not find it good that yeah. this is some too much of information yeah, absolutely but uh, over a period of time when they look look back they will only tell that nobody gave them that information but they they have this information they only praise you looking back okay absolutely. somebody did make the effort did make the effort and such an if you look at nowadays you have lot of coffee connects lot of meetings outside so when my team exactly. goes out out there they i want they to stand up front in terms of the crowd they sh- i want them them to be st- standing apart from the crowd so that requires an enormous amount of reading you look at exactly if you look at elon musk he says almost 100 hours a week you can create a dent in the universe so that means you would have seen what kind of prolific reader he is So when exactly. you're excited about your life, you should do a lot of reading. A lot of reading means a lot of reading, and you should increase the scope because when you read, you get new perspectives. And I am not here to say that reading alone would make you succeed, but reading with a mindset to apply it. So whatever readings exactly. I take exactly. it from a book, I try to see how I can apply it in my organization, how I can apply it in my team. That's will having uh, having knowledge, abundance of knowledge, and not making a good use of it is of no use at all. Yeah. Now that can be connected to that second word of dice, insight. Your insight. knowledge, your concepts, theories are mandatory. That's a baseline. But if you can convert it, that's where you job. You will get a job. That's where it will make you. Okay. Promoted. So before we end this call, I would just like to give a message to the, especially to the youngsters, the college-going people who think this is 
a waste here. I think what's so going on. I hope I'm wrong that they, never, they don't never. think nobody's thinking like that. And uh, people have lost job. What kind of hope you can give them? What kind of uh, things they should reskill with them? This is the last thing, and then probably I'll let you go. <laughs> it was exciting uh, talking to you, and thank you very much for your time. Uh, last but not the least, very important thing I would like to convey is the world is full of opportunities, full of learnings, full of disruptions. It's how you time, how you have, how you make time for this really matters. This pandemic okay. is going to come, it will go. And there can be any set of pandemics like what Bill Gates says, but that's not the end. As long you have the curiosity to learn, unlearn and recreate something, you will survive. And I'm sure leaders have been doing it. They don't say the world has ended. And this is my message to all young, young entrepreneurial leaders of tomorrow. And I believe that I'm talking to leaders of tomorrow, not to young exactly. budding people, managers. I don't want to use the word managers. I want to literally use leaders because leaders always create an impact. They definitely make a difference to themselves, to this organization and to the society as a whole. So I'm doing that. That's and I, That's I am great. a person with a lot of optimism in this. I'm, I'm sure That's we great. all can make a difference. That's great. That's great. That's that's really good to know. So uh, I would uh, end this interview right now. And if on people's demand, they do demand me to take your interview, I'll definitely take their questions and ask for your valuable time again. Uh, sure. Because uh, the, the reason to cover this interview, let me tell you that uh, we know there are Infosys of the world, there are TCS of the world, there are Microsoft and everything. I want to know, let people know. Thank India you. is beyond that. There is yes. there are rapids of the world as well. But Thank you. creating a big big dent every hundred days in the market and creating something new, Thank because you. they cannot be in the same league with the big players because then there is no existence. They are creating Thank something you. out of nothing and they are creating their path for youngsters to learn because it's all about learning cutting edge new edge technologies. I think Thank that's you. where we faltered somewhere. So we are not able to find a solution for pandemic. So even after so much of time. Right. So let's learn something new from each other. And I will uh, let you go right now. I have to finish this show. Tell the viewers what, who, who are you, what you did, and we'll take it from. OK. Sure. Thank you, Sachin. So guys, uh, we were with, uh, with uh, the senior manager HR uh, from Rapid Value Solutions, Mr. Arvind Warrior. We were discussing about the current opportunities, what we could do, what people should do and how to you know uh, really be positive in these times as you know he has told that he has a young family his parents are stuck in bangalore and he's in kochi alone but he's doing all the work at home he's learning a lot of new things he's being positive away from the family he's really working hard i think we also should do do that i'm going to bring you more stories in future i'm also going to bring a lot of other people who would like to share their stories especially i'm covering the hr segment in the in this series so we also can learn what can we, how we can, you know, survive, especially for people who are looking out for job opportunities, how, you know, how you can skill yourself, how you can really work hard, how you can, you know, grow this, uh, grow this, grow during this time, you know, and how you can manage time. So uh, thank you for uh, watching this show. And if you have any questions, do go to the link description. You will have our contact details and then probably we'll take it from